Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. And this is my buddy Puccini who helps me in the craft room and creates havoc most of the time. <laughs> and today I have a very fun springy card with you using the Meandering Meadows paper and um, a couple of different uh, pieces that I haven't used much before. And uh, I think you're going to like it. It's very springy and simple and easy to do. And uh, let's just get started. I used two different dies on this one. This one is called Radiating Stitches die. And I use this outer one and it cuts. So if you cut your paper into quarters, four and a half, or four and a quarter, four and a half? No, four and a quarter. Um, by five and a half, then you can put this die on your paper and it leaves you a little border like that. And so you can put it on there and just cut that little piece out. Now, then on the inside, I thought it would be kind of fun to do this and that comes from this die set, which is the Irresistibles. And so this is Irresistible, um, bloom dies and I used this die and I just kind of tucked it up here in the corner so I could put a sentiment in here. There's still plenty of room for you to write a sentiment here but that's where those things came from. And I used lemon lolly so you need two pieces of lemon lolly that are big enough to cut this piece out. This is four by five and a quarter and this was a half sheet and then this ends up being right around four by five and a quarter. And then from the Meandering Meadow dies, I'm gonna change up my paper, I think, on this one. Uh, I cut out these pieces. Uh, I cut these pieces this way because I could get um, two panels that are three inches wide. Let's see exactly what that works out to be. I'm positive those are three inches, yes. That way I could get two out of a six by six paper pad. And then these are cut four and a quarter. And um, and I just used several that had these daisies. And this is the other half of the daisy paper that went right next to this one here. And then this was another one that had this field of pretty yellow. And I think we'll just use this one just because we've already done one here with the daisies. So ahead of time, I have cut out my frame and this piece just sits right on top of here. So easy peasy. Um, and I think I'm gonna use liquid glue on this one because I wanna move it around to get it exactly right on the, uh, on the frame there. And I, it helps when it moves around a little bit. So there is my piece of paper. And on this piece of paper in the meandering meadow, there's some water feature and kind of a pink sky, but I wanted the yellow flowers. And so there we go. There's that piece. Oh, it moved a little bit too much. So there's that piece. And uh, this is a very, very easy card. And here is my card base. It's a basic white thick card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter. And I'm going to give this an extra burnish here. Get that to close properly. And this piece is already ready to go on here. And I didn't raise this one, but I think I will with this one. I'm going to put some uh, dimensionals on that to raise that whole panel. And that is ready to go on the front of my card. And there we go. Now, for um, sentiments, I used this little happy birthday from the Go To Greetings uh, stamp set. And I thought this would be kind of fun. Now this color isn't even in there. This is the copper clay 
but I wanted something a little bit dark, but I didn't want black and I didn't want super dark brown. So this copper clay struck me as one that I could easily put uh, on my sentiment pieces. And this sentiment piece is cut at one inch by two and three quarters. And so it's big enough you can put a bigger, bigger sentiment on there than this, but we needed happy birthday. So I put this one on here just right there. Simple, easy peasy. And I did give this a tail. I put it too far over on this side, so I'll put my tail on this side on this one. And all you have to do is cut up the middle and then go from each corner to that slice you made and you make a little tail. There we go. And that's going to go right on here. Actually, I kind of like the tail on this side because you see it on this one. It kind of disappears into that. All right, so again, a couple of dimensionals on the back of this. And then I used a piece of this wavy trim, this kind of jute looking trim. And this one was a little small, so I made this one a bit longer. I think this one is about seven inches. And so what I had done was using some glue dots and I saved the glue dots from the paper pumpkins <laughs> and I put a couple of these glue dots down on my paper right in here in fact maybe I'll move that up just a little bit and then take the release paper off and I put a second one down here right next to the first one to create a little sticky surface and that's going to allow me to make a bigger one of these things and I will start by sticking that down like that and I'm going to take one more of these glue dots and put it in between the two of these pieces and remove the paper and or did I remove the glue and the paper? I did. <laughs> so I'll have to put this back down on here and then just release the paper. There we go. And then put this tail down on here as well. And there we have this nice little friendly loop. And then we've got this ready to go right across here and that is just about the end of the decorations on the front of the card. So for the inside, we're going to take this piece and we're going to glue it into place. This one looks like it needs to be trimmed down. This should end up being, you did do this on a piece of four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to go off screen and trim this one down. Okay, I have my piece trimmed down now. And I'm going to add some snail on the back of this and I'm going to use my seal for this part of it and I'm going to use my dot runner for the interior of these dots just to get a little bit of glue down so they won't go flying around. And then that is ready to put on the inside of this card. There we go. Now the second stamp that I used on that was this one and it says sprinkled with love. And right now I don't see the stamp set so I'll put it up on the screen for you as soon as I remember what which one it was. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to go down here and says sprinkled with love. Isn't that pretty? And that is really all of the decoration I put on the outside. Now you could put a little strip of this paper down or you could use in this radiating die there was a heart-shaped die and I thought that would be really cute 
out of some more of this kind of paper for the inside if you wanted to put something else on there or put it on this side because uh, there's not a lot of room to write over here. But I did mine just plain. And then the last thing we need are some, uh, some rhinestones. So I've got some rhinestones. Isn't it amazing how just adding a few rhinestones to something makes your project just look more finished? It's pretty amazing for, to me. So I'm going to put a big rhinestone there, and then I'm going to put a couple of medium ones, one up here in the corner, and one kind of down here in the bottom. And there it is. There you have it. Uh, a very simple little card. Now one of these tails is a little bit longer, so I'm going to trim this, this one up on this side. And you can glue dot your piece together first before you glue dot it in, and that way you'll end up with the um, tails being the same length. But that is it. That is my project for the day. A very simple but bright and cheery for spring card. And um, I think it's one that you could make for a lot of things. Uh, if you used a different background on it, say a blue background, this would make a beautiful sympathy card. And just put heartfelt sympathy or something like that on it. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't have already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. It's always a good time to join Stampin' Up! $125 worth of product. But... Uh, comes with your starter kit for 99 and then you get one complete quarter um, to uh, uh, meet your first minimum. And if you're curious at all about it, my telephone number is always listed in the video below, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. So that's it for me. I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!